A couple of weeks ago, I experienced a wacky, crazy problem of driving over 100 miles an hour in my step van down the freeway. And I was started out driving normal speeds at uh, 50, 55 down the freeway, and all of a sudden my speedometer was going up to 60 and 70 and 80 and 90 and 100. Felt like I was driving the same speed, but speedometer just kept going up and it was doing this weird bouncing action so then I noticed my oil gauge went from 40 all the way up to 80 um, since that time I figured out there's a wacky problem with the speedometer I wasn't really going 100 miles an hour I was actually going 50 or so and I know this because I actually drove past one of those little radar things that tells you your speed and tells you to slow down speed up and it said I was doing 50 everything was fine so since then I've been trying to do some troubleshooting uh, a day or two after that I pulled apart the dash and I looked underneath and this is what I saw so here's the underside of the dash and over here is the speedometer. This part is the odometer and this here is the speedometer. There's no speedometer cable. It's fully electronic. Um, you have a ground wire. It's list GRD and the power. And so what I did was I pulled off the ground wire and I used 200 grit sandpaper, cleaned up the connection, which looked good anyway, and added dielectric grease and put it all back together. I did the same thing over here with the oil pressure gauge, cleaned up that, then I followed these leads down into this mess down here, followed the ground wires, made sure all the connections looked clean, going all the way down into this wire harness here. Then I took it for a test drive. No change at all, that didn't help. I had an idea. I thought, aha, uh -huh, I'll create a dedicated clean ground wire to the body of the step van. Down here you'll notice there is a ground contact right here that goes into the body of the step van. And there was an existing wire on this that goes up over here. I created this dedicated wire here and its own little connector so that I could do testing and that way I could bypass uh, the existing wire harness and have my own ground wire going to the frame. So then I went for another test drive to see if that solved the problem. No change at all. Uh, problem still existed doing the exact same behavior. So after that I crawled underneath the step van. I looked around at all the wires. I found the wire that goes from the battery box uh, for the step van starter batteries and I looked at all the connections there. I didn't undo them, I didn't clean them, which is probably what I need to do next. But I traced those, looked for any loose or weak or wiggly wires or anything that was disconnected. Um, everything seemed very, very snug, everything seemed tight, everything seemed very connected, and that's as far as I've gone up until today. So what I've decided to do is to enlist the help of my brother-in-law, Merrill, he is an engineer with a background in manufacturing in both metal machining and electric, all that kind of stuff. Brilliant guy. So he's going to help me troubleshoot this today. So we're going to try to isolate the grounding problem. So I've got a, I've got a wire here that we're going to attach directly to the battery and then run that over to ooh, a little bit of wind, <laughs> run that over to the speedometer and see if that fixes our speedometer and our oil pressure problem. So the battery box is underneath the steps into the step van. So Merrill is hooking onto a ground wire on the batteries. Then we're going to run that wire off the ground post there up into the dash. Basically the same kind of thing I was doing with going to the um, body here in there with my dedicated wire, but we're going directly to the negative terminal, so that's a sure thing. Uh, I think this is a much better way to do it. Our project today has come to a grinding halt, and it's sort of in an ironic, crazy way. I lost the keys to my step van. I, I haven't driven it for several days. I haven't needed my keys, and I'm not sure where I put them. And we need the keys in order to turn over the ignition to test the oil pressure gauge sensor and uh, see if things are working right. I do have a spare key and it's underneath the hood which I can't get open because I have the step van all the way up against a bush and I'd have to trim the bush in order to open the hood 
or I'd have to use some sort of a winch or a tow strap to tow the step van backwards or find my keys. So I'm opting for finding the keys. So I'm just gonna continue the search. That's probably all I'm gonna get done today. I've received several comments and a couple of text messages from all of you giving me some advice. I appreciate it, it's hard to hear sometimes. But the piece of advice is the way I've grounded the uh, new electric items that I've wired, the lights, the ceiling fans, things like this. Um, I was using those and grounding these to the body of the step van. And that's the way the step van uh, items have been wired that come off of the starter batteries. But with the house batteries, I thought that's no problem and they work fine. But the difficulty in what I understand is that inside of my power box, right next to the solar setup and the batteries, there's a thing called a shunt. And this shunt is just, um, well, I would get into it right now, but I've got the lid on the top of the power box. It's this like brass gizmo, and then attached to that is an electronic piece of circuit board with some uh, fancy stuff and a purple cable that goes out to my solar charge controller. That little piece called the Whizbang Junior measures the amount of electric current being pulled from everywhere in the step van that runs off of the solar setup. And it feeds it back into the charge controller so that it knows how much power to pull off of the panels and put into the batteries and use for other purposes. So if I didn't have that and I didn't have a solar charge controller, then the way I wired it is absolutely fantastic. Because I have the shunt and the Whizbang Junior little electric board there, I really need to run all of these ground items instead of going into the um, step van body here like I have on this connection. It all needs to go into a dedicated ground wire that runs all the way back to the little fuse box to the ground wire area. So I have to undo all of this stuff I've done here, disconnect this, and run this into a uh, dedicated ground wire. So today it is like 100 degrees here in Forest Grove. It's really hot. Um, so this morning I put in an extra wire loom here with a dedicated ground wire and I'm running one up each side. I'm gonna run three of these lights into this new ground wire and then on the other side I'll be doing the ceiling fans going down the other side and then I'll try to pick and choose to try to balance the loads. I have 14 gauge wire there which should be plenty sufficient to be split among these devices. Not gonna run an extra one if I need to. But anyway, I've gotta spend an extra day or two going through and rewiring all of these things, disconnecting them, and making sure everything goes back through the shot. So a little bit more of a delay, not exactly fun, but that's what I've got to do. I was talking to my brother-in-law, Merrill, about the best way to go about doing this, to try to come up with a more efficient way to splice in a number of items, like three lights, into a common ground wire. So Merrill showed me something I've never seen before. It's called a tap splice. And basically it's a little plastic gizmo. I've never seen this before, but it's pretty brilliant. This little gizmo has a pass through right here. You can see it goes through on this side. So this can attach to a continuous wire. So I've got a wire going from the front of the step van to the back of the step van, and it's gonna pass right through this channel. And then the wire that you wanna splice into that to sort of connect to it, let's say in this instance it's going to be one of the LED lights, goes right into this little slot on the back side here. So it's going to go right into the second one. So the main wire connects through here, and then the second one just sort of in butts into this here. And then on top there's this little blade thing that you can see here, and this little blade will uh, get clamped down. So you move over this little thing here and when you push this down it pushes the blade down and it splices into the wire allowing the one wire to continue through the center and the extra wire to um, get spliced into it by this metal connection here. So I'm going to use these on this ground wire so that I can easily allow the lights to get spliced into this common ground wire. So this is a pretty cool little gizmo and they cost a um, dollar 
a dollar twenty down at uh, Ace Hardware. So anyway, this is a pretty cool little solution for making my job easier here. This is my ground wire that I just ran, and then you just clip this up through here like so make sure it's all the way in all right i've got to squeeze down on this to get these two sandwiched together not sure if there's a better way to go about doing this but this is what i'm doing all right that looks like it's squeezed pretty good and that little cap just clicks there and if i did it right i should be able to walk down and be able to flip the switch and have this one and the other lights come on. I've got the switch all the way down here at the beginning. All right, flipping the switch now, and it worked. It's pretty darn cool. I'm excited when this stuff works the way it's supposed to. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.